we really want to work in partnership with, with the university systems, with farmers, with farm groups, with conservation groups, with state agencies to find a way that, that works for everyone. There's got to be the sweet spot here where we can increase the productivity, we can manage these waters, we can remove the nitrates, and we can do it in a way where we're all winners. There's a win-win here, we've got to find it. We started out here in 1885. We have corn, soybeans, and then we harvest about 300 acres of the grass. My dad was very proactive putting in waterways and some terraces. We've got some buffer strips along the rivers. With conservation tillage, there's become a greater demand to tile your land out. Our goal is to have every field pattern tiled. If uh, farmers are not allowed to use their drainage systems, nice drainage systems, not just uh, surface tile, but also their ditches, I would guess that corn and soybean production would drop by 40% overnight. The problem with that is sometimes we move too much water. My dad said that we need to be able to shut off the drainage because in this area, we get into August and it can get very dry. What if we were able to maintain more soil water in the profile at those times? This is kind of in the summer conservation mode, but this structure has a set of baffles, stop logs, boards, whatever you want to call them, weir boards, in the middle that you can raise and lower so you can stack more in here and cause that water table to be even shallower before it leaves the field. Or you can take them all out and put it in that traditional drainage mode. In 2005, we installed the drainage system in that field with the two control structures. This structure gives us the opportunity to manage that soil water instead of just discharging it like it was sort of a waste product. When fertilizer is costing me close to $200 an acre, I don't want to share it with anybody. So through the managed drainage, we're able to keep back nutrients that would normally go out through the tile lines. This portion of the field is managed in conventional drainage mode where the tile is allowed to flow continuously all year round. This part of the field is managed in controlled drainage where we actually open and close these gates to allow water to leave or to conserve water. We monitor drainage flow, so we look at the amount of water that comes out. We look at the nitrogen as nitrate mainly, and we look at phosphorus. You know, on average, it's probably about 50% reductions in nitrogen and phosphorus. We also see pretty close to a 60% reduction in actual drain volume. We're holding the water back. The nutrients that are dissolved in the water are not leaving the site. This is a six inch structure. We put uh, six inch PVC on each side. For the first part of it, you want to use uh, non-perforated so that the water doesn't try and bypass. We use the rock base underneath just to help stabilize it and then we will backfill it up to grade and, and put a marker by it so that it doesn't hopefully not get hit. After we'll get the harvest off we'll put the stop logs in and we'll probably hold it probably within two feet of the surface all through winter and then about a week and a half two weeks before we think we're going to plant I will pull the stop logs and we'll let the, we'll let the, the profile drain out and we'll be able to work the soil, plant it, and then we'll put the stop blocks back in. If you want to add structures and, and, and you're careful enough with your design, you can apply it to the steeper ground. It might not make sense, so everybody starts with the flatter ground first. It's a completely different mindset to drainage when you're trying to lay out a field to be able to control it. So controlled drainage has been adopted more where people can see it fitting in their landscape and they say, that's going to work for me, and they go to their SWCD offices and they're asking about it. And then in August, pump it back. I don't want to get rid of that water or the nutrients. The ultimate goal is to uh, take that knowledge and uh, transfer it to growers, to the dealer supplier industry, uh, to the state agencies, to incorporate that information into best management practices. As you have just seen, conservation practices are being implemented every day to help curb the loss of nutrients and pollutants into our waterways. We know conservation works. Through these practices, we are reducing agriculture's impact on the environment while also helping farmers increase productivity on their lands. 
A report released by NRCS just last year showed that nitrogen losses in surface waters have been reduced by 46 percent in the upper Mississippi River Basin thanks to proven conservation measures. But there's more work to be done. The report also showed nitrogen losses in subsurface waters have only been reduced by 5 percent. More conservation planning and increased management of ag drainage water is needed to continue to improve our nation's water quality. Through continued collaboration and partnerships with farmers, landowners, the private sector, and government entities, we can help ensure cleaner water and a healthy environment for the public, for wildlife, and for those millions of little Americans that will come after us. Thank you.